to the gap. And that'll do it. It's cover your ears because you can't tell me shit right now. Your Kansas City Royals won in extra innings over the villainous, the the unloved Houston Astros in Kauffman Stadium to kick off the series. What a game. What a swing. What a turn of events. We will talk all the way through it. For all you first-time listeners out there, I am Jacob Milham, one half of the Royals Rundown Podcast, and this is Royals Recap presented by Royals Review. If you want to make your reactions known and go get a little bit more in-depth read on the Kansas City Royals action from today, the best place to do that is at RoyalsReview.com. You can also follow them on X and Facebook for more Royals content in your social media feed. But folks, man, this was uh whew, I thought this was gonna be I thought this was gonna be an ugly game. You know, when Cole Reagans usually isn't on, it's uh it's not a good time for for the Royals. You know, when the top of the rotation is not performing as such, it gets a little worrisome. And Astro starting pitching just had whew, man, he had the locks on the Royals lineup. But all in all, your boys of blue are exiting Kauffman Stadium tonight. Happy. They're exiting as victors and they are exiting at seven and four to start off the 2024 season. We kept on talking about those 10 game benchmarks. Well, it's uh, it's time to start looking at those 20 game benchmarks, folks, because things are getting much and much better for the Kansas City Royals. I, 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 I can't tell you how much I was kind of dreading how this game was gonna end up after Cole Reagans is, I wouldn't even say rough start. It just wasn't, it wasn't polished. It wasn't like him. He seemed to be seemed to be trying to pitch around the Astros a little bit too much, which is it's just not what we've come to expect from Cole Reagans in his limited time here in Kansas City. We very much expect him to be the guy that goes out and goes after the opposition, overpowers them, and then just gets them looking silly with that wonderful changeup of his. It wasn't a it wasn't a terrible start. It really wasn't. It was very much similar to what Alec Marsh threw on Sunday. Reagan's tonight had five innings. He allowed ten hits, whopping ten hits, but only gave up three earned runs with one walk and five strikeouts. So, like that's that's not bad when you look at the overall impact on the final run line. Yeah, sure. The Houston Astros absolutely out hit the Royals tonight. Fourteen hits for Houston, seven for the Royals. But all that matters is what. Uh, how many runs did you score? And you know the Houston Astros, they they just could not get that done. And there's there's a lot of pivotal plays that happened that made that possible. But I think the the biggest or sorry something that brought a smile to my face. The Astros were five and eighteen with runners in scoring position. They left thirteen men on base, and I think that goes to show how Reagan's and the Royals defense really stepped up when it did matter the most, because I, I think like this is the, this is the perfect formula. All you have to do is score one more run to beat the opponent. If you're averaging four runs and, or averaging scoring four runs and only surrendering three, that's a winning formula to me. You don't have to go out and have an offensive outburst every single game. But stuff like this, this is another gritty win. This is the Royals. This is for the Royals. This is their back to back come from behind win after doing so on Sunday against the Chicago White Sox. Absolutely love that. And I know some some folks after the vote, they're talking about, oh, attendance is down in Coffin Stadium and the fan base sucks and they're not loud enough and things like that. Well, come come to my podcast feed. OK, I can't go out to the games in Coffin Stadium, but I'll sure as hell make up a racket from where I can here in Virginia. But all that matters is the folks that are going out to the game are having a great time. The the Royals are six and two in Kauffman Stadium to start off the year. I think that's great. For the the past few years where I've been, I would say diligently following the team, not as a not as like a casual fan just catching a game when I can. 
diligently following this team, losing records at Kauffman Stadium have been the standard. Sending, sending the fans home unhappy on a work night has been the standard. That is not what your Kansas City Royals are doing so far in 2024. There's a lot of season ahead of us right now, but you you have to you have to take these wins where you can enjoy them, savor them, and just talk about how they happen. And truthfully, the the MVP of this win was unequivocally the Kansas City Royals bullpen. The the position group that even myself and many folks around the Royals were really ragging on to start off the 2024 season because they were having some really bad implosions. It wasn't just one or two arms. It was several of the veteran acquisitions. So you know what they went out and did? They Those veteran acquisitions, for the most part, said, okay, we're going to carry this team on our back. The lineup's not doing too much, so we're going to keep them in this game. And that's exactly what they did. Nick Anderson, Chris Stratton, John Schreiber, three guys brand new to the Kansas City Royals. They pitched three innings between the three of them, only three hits allowed, no earned runs, and three strikeouts. Absolutely love seeing that. John Schreiber quietly having a having a very, very dominant start to 2024. I was pretty worried about his wild pitch filled appearance. Um, it was, I think it was the game after opening day, but all in all, he hasn't allowed a single earned run yet. He's not going to overpower the opposition, but he is going to let them put balls in play, let the defense do its work and they're doing great, but it was none other than the general James MacArthur getting his first win of 2024, pitching a two inning outing. You don't, you don't see that very often from Mr. MacArthur only allowing one hit with two strikeouts in that span. I absolutely love that. He looked very much on point against the Astros. That was, I think that was better than like any save we're going to see from him this, this year. It's you, you go and you go to the top of the 10th. Okay. There's, there's a runner on second already. What are the Houston Astros going to do with some potent bats coming up? And what does he do? Boom. Gets a line out from Chaz McCormick. Strikes out Victor Carantini. Um, he does give up that single to Jeremy Pena. It gets Yenier D- Diaz to third. My, my heart was going a little bit there. But Jake Myers strikes out swinging for MacArthur's second strikeout of the 10th inning. And that gets the bats back in business. And all it took was one AB. Salvador Perez, the team captain, singled to left center, and that is all she wrote. Garrett Hampson came around and scored the decisive run, and yeah, that is that is all she wrote. It was it was an ugly day for the Royals at the plate. I will say that seven strikeouts as a team to seven hits. But they did have five walks, which I was very surprised about. MJ Melendez take a take a bow, one hit performance with two walks to only one strikeout. Absolutely love that. His his value is just getting on base, and even right now, b- people aren't going to talk about it. But he is now the team leader in OPS. Yes, even more than Bobby Witt Jr.'s. 1.055 MJ Melendez right now is sitting at a cool 1.148 with a even th- 333 batting average so that just goes to show the guy gets on base he d- does damage to the balls and he is carrying that momentum from the Chicago White Sox series into the Astro series so absolutely love to see that um, Hunter Renfro hey you know what he got another hit it's, uh, he's climbing up from the bottom to say the least uh, he got a got a hit got on base it's that that's all that matters from those two Adam Frazier is gonna draw some ire from the Royals fan base absolutely should um, if Michael Massey is getting healthier sooner rather than later there is going to be some conversations about him Nelson Velasquez take a let's get a clap for him he had a multi-hit game as well in the DH spot. So really love to see that the middle of this Royals lineup did all did all the work that you could ask them to do.
Salvador Perez, MJ Melendez, and Nelson Velasquez really carried the the burden of keeping the lineup moving, scoring runs for the team, and that was ultimately the deciding factor were those guys, and especially the captain, Salvador Perez. So, folks, this is, I know we're going to have a post-game availability from Salvador Perez. I'm sure we're going to hear from manager Mac Quattrero as well. Um, but I am getting a, I'm getting a strange notification on my on my computer saying that I have a, a phone call incoming. I don't I don't know how that's working, but we're gonna go and take it. Uh, caller, you are on with Royals recap. How you doing tonight? This is the Royals recap. Yeah, that's about all I can say about that. Let's go ahead and reset real quick with the ad break. Coming up on the other side, we will hear the post game availability and I will get to your Spotify Q and A's. Stay tuned. It's coming off. Oh, shoot. Here we go. Oh, it's cold. Uh, it, it was cold done this a lot of times before it never gets old just a little bit cold uh the crowd loves you i don't know if you knew that or not salvador perez is the water in your ear right now uh, it's okay no se matter we win tonight that's right you've been in so many big situations bigger situations than this but with Nobody out. A speedy runner, Garrett Hampson at second base. What are you thinking as you step to the plate? I just try to take the ball far as I can to pull him in third base, you know? So I hit it in the gap. We score and we win the game. This is a very good team that you were playing against. You had won four in a row, now five in a row. You were trailing. There we go. I think it was for you, not for me. Thank you. You're trailing against a really good team here. Reagans hangs in there. You come back. What have you learned about the 2024 Royals in this homestand? That we're going to play hard to the last hour. You know, that now today is over. We need to come in tomorrow, play hard, and see what happens. This group clearly doesn't give up, too, and you guys played good baseball, fell a little bit short in Baltimore. What, what makes this group different? Is it the experience? Is it the energy? What is it? They're hungry. They're hungry to win, and we're going to do it the best we can do every night. Tell me about where your heartbeat is at when you step into the box. That, nothing really makes you nervous, right? I used to a situation like that, yo. <laughs> yes, you are used to that situation. Um, last thing, your pitchers. Reagans, to be able to hang in there against the team with Altuve and Alvarez and all them, and then your bullpen. The bullpen was a great today. Reagan, too. You know, it's part of the game. He compete, and we got the win tonight. Yes, they're all staying and, and waiting to hear you. You got anything you want to say? Thank you for the love. I, I love you, too. Salvador Perez. <laughs> Another game where a ton of stuff went on. I mean, it was relatively low scoring, but there was a lot of stuff going on in that game. And um, Javier hadn't given up a run until that fifth inning all year. And watching him pitch, you can see why. I mean, there's tons of deception. There's slow breaking ball, the good changeup, the rising fastball. And the guys were hanging in there. They were putting together some pretty good at-bats. I thought we swung the bat, drove the ball around the field a little bit with nothing to show for it. Um, and then the sack fly and Bobby's triple were huge. Um, 
you know, and then Vinny getting a ball in play, awkward spin there, made it a tough play for Bregman. So, um, you know, and both, you know, they, they ran some good relievers out there. There's tough at bats. We had a couple chances that we didn't capitalize on, but overall, just staying with it. I mean, I was really happy that Salvi did, you know, quickly, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff that you don't have to try to figure out uh, from then on out. Man, remarkable play, you know. I mean, we've seen that a lot. He goes to he goes to his backhand about as well as anybody, and his athleticism diving for that ball is incredible. Yeah, absolutely saved a run, right? Oh, for sure, they're going to send him. Yeah. Think of uh, Cole obviously didn't have his best stuff, but still keeping you guys in, in the game. Yeah, I don't. I think he had his best stuff. You know, that's a good lineup. They made him work. Um, they laid off a lot. From my perspective, I didn't see the replays or anything, but a lot of pitches right off the plate, really tough pitches. Um, and you know, if we turn that double play in the first, or he's able to get Alvarez out one of those times with two strikes, he's he's coming out of there with with one, maybe no runs. You know, and um, so a credit to him, really. And then he got stronger in the fifth, and that that was a big inning, being able to put up a zero on the fifth. When you had five scoreless innings of relief from four different guys, how big was that performance tonight? Oh, well, without it, we're not sitting here talking about a win, you know, and um, the efficiency of it was was impressive as well. The, You know, Schreiber, I think, threw eight or nine. MacArthur was 22 or three in two innings. Um, you know, Anderson's inning, I think, was in the low teens. So really, really efficient, which is good for us as we embark on a long stretch. Three, three nothing is obviously not insurmountable, but to, to do it a couple times in a row, what kind of traction do you think that that gives you with everything else that you got going too? Well, yeah, three nothing. You're you're squarely in the game, you know, and and our guys know that. And really, you're just trying to get that first one to get a little feel for we got something going here, and to get them all in that one inning was huge. How big was it? How did Bill come up there, get that sacrifice spot, moving the runners over, kind of help start to turn the tide for you guys in that? Field? Yeah, he, he, you know, he executed that. That was on his own. He bunted on his own, which is fine. He that, he felt like that was the best way he had to move those guys over at the time um, and it obviously led to us putting some runs up winning streaks a whole lot more fun than losing streaks you can quote yourself on that one yeah <laughs> all righty y'all that is just gonna about do it for the royals recap tonight on april 9th once again the houston astros fall to the kansas city royals four to three in extra innings action don't have any q a responses to go over that is a-okay i reset the clock yesterday just wanted y'all to let you know jeremy and i will be responding to your questions you can drop your questions in the q a's for our monday episode it's right there just says ask us ask us a question just do it just, just let let us talk. Let us talk to you. Yeah, we're right here for it. All right, y'all. I need to go to bed before I get too crazy. Thank you all for supporting us. Thank you very much for listening once again. You got to go check out RoyalsReview.com for the best Royals content around. And until next time, go Royals.